Today I'm going to make the beautiful primary explosive tetramine copper persulfate. This video was done on an email request from Gorilla Chemistry, and while I don't typically do email requests, this one sounded particularly interesting, so I figured I'd give it a shot. Now to get started, I first needed to make two solutions. Solution A is essentially just a saturated solution of copper sulfate, which I made by dissolving 6.5 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate in 20 grams of distilled water. Once all the copper sulfate had dissolved, I set the beaker aside and began solution B, which I made by dissolving 6.5 grams of ammonium per sulfate in 15 grams of 25% ammonia. This didn't take nearly as long to dissolve, and once it did, I poured both solutions into two separate centrifuge tubes. These were then placed on ice until both solutions had cooled down to nearly 0 degrees Celsius. I then removed both solutions from the ice bath and poured solution B containing the ammonia and persulfate into a beaker, which was then placed into a larger beaker containing ice water in order to keep everything as cold as possible. I tossed in a stir bar and began slowly adding the cold solution of copper sulfate to the ammonium persulfate under constant stirring. As soon as the copper sulfate is added, the solution turns an extremely dark purple as the reaction quickly proceeds, which happens in two discrete steps. In the first step of the reaction, four molecules of ammonia react with one molecule of copper sulfate to form one molecule of tetramine copper sulfate. This chemical looks nearly identical to tetramine copper persulfate, except in my experience the crystals tend to be larger and darker. In the second step of the reaction, a double displacement occurs between the ammonium persulfate and the tetramine copper sulfate yielding ammonium sulfate and tetramine copper persulfate. This second reaction is favored as tetramine copper persulfate is less soluble than ammonium persulfate or tetramine copper sulfate, but not by a very wide margin. Anyway, once all the copper sulfate had been added, I allowed the stirring to continue for about a minute, and then I allowed the beaker to sit on ice for about 15 minutes to allow the product to fully crystallize. Once it had, I dumped this all through vacuum filtration and rinsed it thoroughly with acetone until the filtrate ran clear. As a side note, I mentioned earlier that this is a primary explosive, and as a rule of thumb, it's a really bad idea to vacuum filter primary explosives. However, tetramine copper persulfate is an extremely weak primary in the grand scheme of things, and even when completely desiccated, I was unable to get it to ignite any way except with a uh, direct flame. In any case, after pulling a vacuum for about a minute to remove as much moisture as I could, I then transferred the purple crystals to a vacuum desiccator and dried it under a full vacuum for about an hour. This was then weighed for a final mass of 4.33 grams, which represents a 46.3% yield. Now, I will say that this is, in my opinion, the most beautiful compound I've made since copper acetate, and the two actually look fairly similar in their crystal size, structure, and vibrance of color. Initially, I was kind of sad when I got to this point, as there seemed to be a consensus in the limited literature I could find on this chemical that tetramine copper persulfate is extremely unstable and decomposes to a green solid within hours to days. However, I made this compound nearly two months ago, and since then it's been sitting in a clear glass vial looking as gorgeous as the day I made it. That said, I'm assuming maybe it simply breaks down if it isn't properly dried, or maybe I just need to give it more time, I'm not actually sure. Anyway, to demonstrate the energetic compounds of tetramine copper persulfate, I began by taking an extremely tiny amount and igniting it with a butane lighter. This resulted in a very unremarkable fizzle that left behind a green spot. I started with such a tiny quantity because I'm not familiar with this compound and because there's such an incredible difference in the energy output of different primaries, and a similar sized piece of silver fulminate would have resulted in a fairly loud report. With that said, now that I had an idea of how explosive this stuff was, I put a fairly large quantity on a watch glass and then ignited it with a propane torch again. As you just saw, as soon as the torch got close, the entire mass of tetramine copper persulfate instantly decomposed with a visible cloud of vapor. There was no sharp report, even at this much larger scale, and the reaction ejected molten green particulate in every direction. I'm not actually sure what the reaction byproducts are here, but I'm assuming ammonia gas is definitely one. That along with sulfur and possibly nitrogen oxides, and their gas phase reaction to ammonium sulfate, sulfite, and nitrite could explain the vapor cloud produced. 
As for the green residue left behind, it's certainly copper based and looks very much like copper hydroxide or carbonate. However, I blasted this stuff with a propane torch for over a minute and didn't decompose it, so it really can't be those. Let me know if you have any idea what this stuff could be, because I'm somewhat interested to know while not quite interested enough to do all the tests to figure it out myself. In any case, that's all I have for today. I hope you found this video interesting, and as always, I want to thank all my incredible patrons for their generous contributions. Your support is vital and very appreciated. To everyone else, if you'd like to see more content like this, consider subscribing on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, or even by becoming a patron yourself. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.